Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Thanks for your support on Patreon, Adam and the Anthony Bergeron. AJ Styles wants to invade NXT, loads of WWE legends cameo on Raw, and Stone Cold Steve Austin probably has one too many Steve Weisers and it's awesome. And Seth Rollins has fired a shot at AEW. Click the timestamps in the video description below to go straight to any of those stories. I'm Ollie Davis, give us a subscribe, press the thumbs up button, and answer our question of the day in the comments. What did you think of the Raw reunion show? Because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere and click the eye above my head to give your rating where you can choose from rawsome core average poor and rawful as i review the 22nd of july raw reunion episode of monday Night Raw Reunion! John Cena opened Raw in a t-shirt colour that, using the power of green screen editing, can easily be replaced by cats, or pictures of The Rock, or AEW logos, or even to put hair on his head. The Usos interrupted him with a rap battle challenge, which Cena most definitely won when he joked Jimmy and Jay look just like their mugshots from one of the various times they've been arrested. <laughs> drunk driving. This was actually a pretty effective way to get the current roster over using more established legends. Unfortunately, that's where that ended for the night. The Usos brought out their shoot dad Rikishi for a two cool dance, but the dastardly revivals music hit instead, where the heel tag team were accompanied by Devon Dudley. Why is Devon with the Raw reunion? Just don't think about it. But what about Bubba Ray with the Raw reunion? And Bubba Ray turned WWE down. What's Booker T doing on commentary now? Raw reunion, stop asking questions, you stupid son of a bitch. This turned into the Usos with Rikishi, obviously in their corner, versus the Revival with Devon, obviously in theirs which the Usos won. The 24-7 championship saw an incredible nine title changes on this show, which began with Drake Maverick. Becoming a three-time champion from R-Truth, where the Godfather suddenly appeared to announce the Ho train, despite there being no actual hoes with him because it's 2019. Oh, you social justice warriors stopping all the fun exploitation of sex workers. Then Pat Patterson pinned Drake Maverick. After the Boogeyman randomly distracted him because Raw Reunion. Then in the best title change of the night, Patterson was beaten by his former corporation stooge buddy Gerald Briscoe, which Kelly Kelly then won to become the first ever 24-7 champion with the same last name as her first name. Woke move, WWE. Woke move. Then Kelly Kelly was beaten by generic WWE diva from the noughties, who I later found out was Candice Michelle, who was beaten immediately by Alundra Blaze with Melina as the special guest referee. Raw reunion. Then in a fun parody of the infamous WCW Nitro segment where Blaze dropped the WWF women's title in the trash, the million dollar man Ted DiBiase bought it from her because everybody has a price apart from... Drake Maverick, who beat DiBiase for it in a limo, who our truth then pinned to not only escape the episode with the title, but also with Drake's wife Renee Michelle. Renee's his wife now. Drew McIntyre walked past Alicia Fox, Dana Brooke, Caitlin and Santino talking about hats because Raw Reunion, and then beat up Cedric Alexander so their match never got underway. Viking, don't mention the war experience, Raiders, beat Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins to a mostly silent crowd, really exposing WWE's current roster as lacking in star power. Then we got Eric Bischoff's big WWE return, where he briefly tried to poach Mike and Maria Kanellis to SmackDown. There's this thing called the wildcard rule, Eric, that pretty much means there isn't a brand split anymore. Anyway, Maria emasculated Mike in front of everyone, and Ron Simmons said the word damn through a megaphone. Samoa Joe then came out to insult us all for loving nostalgia so much, which reminds me of this really funny time in the 90s. So Roman Reigns came down for a pretty intense brawl that unfortunately wasn't the start of a SummerSlam feud between them, because Roman won clean 15 minutes minutes later. Seth Rollins did comedy on Miz TV Next by making fun of how Brock Lesnar looks. Even Paul Heyman interrupting him couldn't save this lazy, tired material. Where Rollins claimed he'd show Lesnar isn't a beast, he's just a man. Not the man, that's Becky Lynch. So he'll win the Universal title at SummerSlam. 
We've all heard this feud motivation before, and no one's excited by it. Sami Zayn and Rey Mysterio had a bit of a dream match next, with Sami of course being trained by famous luchador El Generico. What happened to that guy? And not only that, but the commentary leveled up with Jonathan Coachman joining the desk. I can't wait to hear your expert insight into lucha wrestling, Coachman! Zayn tried to walk out of the match when RVD, Sergeant Slaughter, The Hurricane and Kurt Angle appeared on the stage to stop him. Raw reunion! Ray then hit a three and a quarter star frog splash for the win. The Street Profits had one of the best segments of the night and it contained zero legends. Angelo Dawkins joked about smoking weed with RVD and Montez Ford continues to have rock style charisma. AJ Styles, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson are now calling themselves The OC as they're presumably big fans of the popular mid noughties teen drama of the same name. California. AJ took on Rollins in a singles match, which was really just a backdrop for Shawn Michaels and Triple H to come out in Seth's corner as DX, to then be joined by the rest of the clique. Road Dogg, X-Pac, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. Yep, that's everybody. There's nobody else missing from this lineup. Raw reunion? Interestingly, AJ mouthed off at HBK as he left, clearly saying, I know where NXT is, don't think I won't come down there. Potentially setting up an NXT club invasion angle where Michaels is a producer. Mick Foley tried to introduce his favourite Raw memory on the Titan Tron, but the Fiend appeared and choked him out with the mandible claw, which was cool, but it felt a bit fudged in. In place of an actual women's match on the show, Raw reunion, Becky Lynch and Natalia had a pretty intense back and forth on a moment of bliss. Lorne Strowman squashed a random Jobber, and then all the WWE legends amassed on the stage for the night's closing a toast to Monday Night Raw segment. It was all a bit hokey and self-congratulating until glass shatters, crowd go wild. Stone Cold Steve Austin cut an in-ring promo to close the show, seemingly already a few Steve Weisers deep. And it was all the better for it, as he was quite obviously off script. It felt genuine, even when Austin said we're all part of a larger WWE family, which sounds like corporate speak. Even when he just listed various fast food items for several minutes, he was still absolutely captivating. He then brilliantly continued to ramble when he realised he had more time left and started to tell a story about him and Gerald Briscoe doing something illegal in South Africa before he was told to wrap it up. Oddly, this felt like a finale to the entire show, like there would be no more roar after this. It's been a good run, folks. Enjoy the debut season of AEW premiering this fall. Well, I got a kick out of the cameos. That's the Raw reunion's major flaw. The legends did nothing to hook you in for next week, for tomorrow on SmackDown, for SummerSlam in three weeks' time. That's what nostalgia should be used for, to get your current wrestlers more over and progress storylines, not for superficial cheap pops to boost TV ratings. This week's Raw is Avroge, but it should have been so much more. And now over to Luke with the news. Great review, Ollie. I'm looking forward to our own personal Wrestle Ramble Raw reunion review later on today. A lot of names were listed for last night's Raw reunion, including Steve Austin, Hulk Hogan, D-Generation X, the architects of the Attitude Era, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, and most importantly, Alicia Fox. However, one of the big surprises was former WWE Champion Rob Van Dam. RVD appeared during a match between Rey Mysterio and Sami Zayn, who along with an Olympic gold medalist, a superhero, and a drill sergeant who was also a character in G.I. Joe. Wrestling is so weird. Stopped Zayn from leaving to aid Mysterio in picking up a win. Rob Van Dam was a surprise because he's currently under contract with Impact Wrestling and is with the company until Bound for Glory. And despite there being tensions between WWE and Impact Wrestling after Rhino returned to the company at Slammiversary despite still being under WWE contract, Mike Johnson of PW Insider is reporting that Impact gave written permission for RBD to be on Raw Reunion with no issues. And while I'm sure the Nostalgia Acts had fun backstage, and the crowd enjoyed giving them their cheap pops, it was reportedly a different story for everyone else within WWE. Dave Meltzer noted in Figure Four's daily updates that Raw Reunion was a ton of headaches, saying that several planned segments had to be changed at the last minute. Now, while changing and rewriting Raw on the fly isn't anything new, if anything, it's just another day at the office, this wasn't because Vince McMahon was changing his mind for a change. According to Meltzer, it was due to some of the wrestlers being brought in were flagged by medical 
from doing anything physical. And that meant many segments were changed. Raw Reunion was reportedly an idea from the USA Network, who are concerned with the show's falling ratings, which are down 20% from last year. For comparison, it's expected that this episode of Raw should top 3 million viewers for the first time in 2019. But when WWE did Raw 25 last January, that episode did 4.53 million viewers. One of the other reasons USA Network and WWE are looking to regain the viewership is the rise of All Elite Wrestling, which will debut later this year on TNT and have received critical and fan praise for their three shows Double or Nothing, Fighter Fest, and Fight for the Fallen. Not to mention the ticket demand for All Out outdrew any WrestleMania in history. And yesterday, the roster for AEW were directing folks to a brand new Twitter and Instagram account for AEW on TNT, promising a huge announcement will be coming tomorrow, which is speculated to be the launch date for their weekly TV show in October. Someone who doesn't seem to be concerned about all this is terrible Twitter user Seth Rollins. The former Universal Champion faced a lot of ridicule from wrestling fans around the world a couple of months ago when he tweeted following Stomping Ground that WWE was the best wrestling on the entire planet, getting into a Twitter feud with Will Ospreay that Rollins eventually apologized for. Rollins also went after his Shield brother John Moxley, who will be facing Kenny Omega at AEW's All Out next month, and he's done the same thing again on a conference call to promote SummerSlam. But it wasn't just Moxley, as Rollins also took a shot at Moxley's employer, AEW. He told Post Wrestling, now he's competition. Now he's the one trying to take dinner off my table. So good on him, but we're gonna do our best to continue to be the best here at WWE. And if those guys wanna step up to the big leagues to give it a shot, then by all means, but we're gonna knock them dead just like we do everybody else. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to our Patreon pledge hammers, some of which you can see scrolling their way into my stomach. Watch me and Pete break down even more news from San Diego Comic-Con, including Kevin Feige talking about the next Avengers movie. I've been Luke Owen and that were wrestling.